there is a very important car missing from the HQ, and that is the SVJ. And it is back now from its long journey back from Asia, and we need to go pick it up, and we're in a hurry because we have an appointment at 10.30, and it is 10.20 right now. All right, so the SVJ is back, but obviously they had a lot of issues with it on the rally. So we're gonna grab some jumper packs just in case the batteries are dead. Also, I don't even know if the starter is gonna work because they said the starter was overheating. Every time they started it, if it died or something, they tried to start it again and then the starter would stop working. Well, let's try it. Let's hope for the best. Put on the brake. Do you hear it spinning slowly? I had enough juice to get it going. There are other issues with the car, like EGT probes were dead. I'm gonna grab another one too, just in case. At least try to get this car back here and then start diving into it and see if we can figure out what's wrong with it because that's a very special car. I love that car, Damon loves that car, and I know you guys love that car as well. So having it back here is awesome, but if it's not running, that doesn't really do us any good. So we need to figure out what's going on with that car. Of course there's no gas in the van. Oh, you're good, you got 68 miles. 68 miles. You know what else is funny? We have to sign these waivers to get into this place. Okay, by signing below, I agreed to accept and assume all risks of illness, personal injury, psychological, psychological. injury, <laughs> pain and suffering by entering this facility. This place must be wild. I wanna see how actually dirty it is. They look pretty muddy in the pictures. I'm more worried about the interior because I know that they had mold issues when they got there and I don't know if they actually cleaned it out. I think maybe they just wiped it down. So now having that moisture in the car, especially sitting in a container on the ocean for what, what's it been like? Six weeks. Six weeks. It might be really, really nasty, but also with all that moisture in the car, that can affect all of the electronics. So it could even have more issues now than when it was in Vietnam. So there could be mold in the ECU. I, I, don't even, <laughs> I don't want to mold in the ECU, that'd be terrible. Like obviously it was raining like crazy over there, so there was a lot of moisture in the air. It's gonna be bad. <laughs> All right, so we're here at Cars to pick up the SVJ, but the container has not arrived yet. It should be here soon. We're just kind of waiting in suspense right here. The anticipation, how bad is it gonna be? We're gonna have to get a tow truck and get this thing back to the shop, or are we gonna be able to drive it? I hope we can drive it. It looks pretty cool though, like seeing that container open up, seeing the back of that car, just knowing how many miles have been put on it in Asia. I mean, there were like monsoons and stuff going on when the guys were there, so that's pretty sick. We'll see if it starts. And I'm gonna cross my fingers that it does fire up and it's just an easy thing and we can get back to the HQ and figure out what's going on with it. I don't wanna have to be here in their shop trying to figure out why this thing won't start. Scratches everywhere. <laughs> I mean, it could have been worse, I think, but we haven't dug into it. We'll have to get back to the shop and uh, have a deeper look at this thing. Look how caked it is. It's a pretty thick layer of dirt. All right, Tim, you get, you get the van. I'll take the SVJ. It's a fair, straight up swap right there. Fair van GT, SVJ. Same, same. <laughs> Gearbox issue that came up. You got the light there. You got yeah, a gearbox got a, issue. Got a check engine light too. Let's see if we make it back to the shop. <laughs> How's it feel? Um, yeah, I mean, so far so good. It's got. It definitely had some sort of gearbox issue, but I don't know what it is. We'll have to check the codes when we get back. And, 
see what's going on with this thing. Also, the check engine light. Obviously, they had those issues with the exhaust gas sensors. So, I think they might have changed one, but there are three more. And if any one of those failed, then it's going to go into limp mode. So, we've got quite a few issues that we need to sort out on this thing. So, after 3,000 miles of hard driving, there's a lot of service stuff that you're you're gonna want to do no matter what you're gonna want to do an oil change for sure that's gonna tell you a lot of things right there check the filter out make sure everything looks good I mean obviously we've got some transmission issues so we probably need to drain the gearbox oil as well and just check it out and see if there are, is any debris inside of there and then obviously we just want to inspect the whole car this thing went through some storms it went through some insanely rough roads so just going over all the suspension checking everything out I know they also hit a curb when they were leaving uh, one of the start lines. So many people around them that they couldn't even see the curb. There was that many people were just absolutely insane. That must have been uh, one hell of an experience. The interior actually doesn't look too bad. I mean, it's dirty, but I don't really see a lot of mold in it right now. I have maybe a little bit over there. I can't really tell if it's just from all the moisture, like when they opened the door when it was raining, and then the dirt, or if that's mold. But either way, it needs a serious cleaning in the interior. It is, it is filthy. I mean, the good thing is, like I said, that it doesn't look moldy, but we'll see when we take a closer look when we get back to the shop. I don't think that's dirt, Mike. Nah, that's mold. I wonder where else this mold is hiding. Probably in the seat. I'm probably sitting on. That's revenge that for making me sit in your car. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> SVJ in the shop now. We've got some mechanical issues that we're gonna have to figure out, possibly some electrical issues, but before we do any of that, we're just gonna kinda go over the car and uh, look at the exterior and see what happened on the rally. I mean, it's obviously filthy. I did notice that there's a chip on the windshield. That's a pretty good size it's, one. It's pretty big, so we need to take care of that before it spreads and just destroys this entire windshield. I'm sure that's expensive. Flap here, I don't know why that's sticking out like that, but that's gonna catch a lot of air. I don't know what's back behind the bumper right there, but either way, that's gonna have to get looked at. They hit something in the front here. Took a pretty solid hit there, but it doesn't look like it cracked anything. Oh, the bumper oh, is damaged. Quite a bit here. That's that's what they hit. That's yep. the curb, right? Yeah, and a little bit higher too. Yeah, I mean, it got all the way up in here. Yeah, that's all carbon. It actually went into the paint because you can oh, see yeah, the no, yellow it's, underneath. It's down underneath through the clear bra and everything. But we're not going to be really able to assess that damage until that piece gets unwrapped and we can look behind there. Overall, I think the wheels look okay. I didn't really see any damage on them, but I know they hit like some massive potholes and drove on some really, really bad roads. So there is a very good chance that the wheels are actually bent on the inside. So we'll probably have to pull all the wheels off and get them on the balancer and check that out. A bent wheel is gonna mean a big vibration at speed, even at freeway speed. So let's put this thing up in the air, see what the bottom of this car looks like. Hey Josh, come take a look at the SVJ. Oh, <laughs> Jeez. We have to charge a few more dollars for this one. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> so the outside is pretty bad, but then on the inside, there is a little bit oh, yeah, the floor. of mold there. Oh yeah, on the speaker grill itself. There's some mold in there, maybe on the dash, um, maybe like on the Alcantara. I haven't really looked at the roof liner or the seats yet, but it's, uh, it's going to need some attention. 
So underneath the car, so far, I'm actually really surprised on how little damage I see, knowing what those roads looked like out there. Watching the in-car video from the guys, like I thought the bottom of the car was just gonna be absolutely wrecked, but the bumper still looks good. There's obviously just like a few scuffs from coming out of driveways and stuff, but not bad at all. Like there's no chunks out of it. All the hardware is still there. Nothing's ripped out, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. And then we got the center tunnel cover here. That all looks good. This is a, something went sideways here. Oh, you know what? That's from when uh, Damon did the uh, donuts at Hoonian. At oh, the at the drag strip at thing, the right? Strip, yeah. Yep. Yeah, that looks exactly like that. That's uh, going <laughs> off, which I've seen quite a bit on road race cars. When they leave the track sideways and go into the dirt, you kind of like, do a little curb grind on the edge, and that's what it looks like. But that was there before. Yeah, so that's, that's good. As far as damage from the rally, it's uh, surprisingly good. It's really clean. I think it's good down here. Well, that's one less thing that we have to worry about. The bottom of the car looks good. I know that the guys brought back some stuff with them, but I'm wondering if it's still in the front. And let's see what kind of presents we have in here. We got DDE merch. We got DDE merch. This is the gumball. That's sick. That's pretty sick. Too bad it's extra large or I might take it. It's too big for me. Oh, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Los Angeles. How much does it cost? 380B. Bitcoin. Bot is bot. Tiling is bot or something like that. It's the dollar there. <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> All right, so they got a couple jerseys. Three jerseys. Three jerseys. Nice. Oh, Mark. here's the uh, EGT sensor. Why is it so crazy? So it might just be where it goes, like how it routes, but you can see that right there. The tip is melted off of it. Is it broken or did it melt off? Well, it broke, melted, I don't know, something snapped, like got brittle from heat. This sensor is basically inside of the exhaust stream. So it's inside of the tube. The tip of the sensor is reading how hot the exhaust gases are. The ECU wants to know that, so it knows that all the cylinders are running correctly. Behind this, is the oxygen sensor. So they'll be further downstream, but they wanna know what the temp is upstream, like coming out of the head, probably near the collector, since there's four. I'm guessing that there's one in each collector. And without these, the engine goes into a limp mode, a mode basically to save the engine and also not to overheat the engine compartment and the exhaust system. These are going to be telling the ECU how hot it is in the exhaust, and then probably adding more fuel, changing the timing a bit, probably closing the throttles a bit, limp mode, to control that so they don't have that issue with the engine and overheat. Oh, this is the tip. There you go. There you go. There it is. So actually it did break off from vibration. That's crazy. So uh, that would make sense why it failed. So I'm gonna pull this thing off the rack, pop the engine lid, see if anything there looks out of place. And then we're gonna hook up the scanner and see what's going on with this thing. See what kind of codes we got. We had the check engine light and the transmission malfunction when I jumped in the car. Definitely dirty. It's dirty. <laughs> but man, there's so much stuff just packed in to this engine compartment. It's pretty hard to see anything. Oh, you're right. There is uh, two EGTs on each side. Yeah. Yeah, and, so I think uh, it's one in each one of these collectors. They only replaced one, because these ones over here look really old. Crusty. Yeah. Yeah, I think we just need to replace all of them because if one failed that means that the others are going to fail shortly i don't want to take that chance i mean there's a pile of sand on the valve covers <laughs> so yeah yep. all of these different control units that are in here in the engine compartment just getting baked all the time whenever the engine's running and electronics do not like heat so i find it pretty interesting that they have all of these electronics that are actually in the engine compartment. I'm not sure why they do that, but a lot of manufacturers do. They'll run the ECU, just like on my AMG. The ECU is actually in the engine compartment next to the engine. It's time to see what these codes are gonna be. Try to figure out what they mean. Well, Mike, uh, we got issues. A lot. That's a lot of codes that are popping <laughs> That's out. a lot. Alrighty. Did you, is everything red now? Yep. All right, well, let's go to the ECM first. Uh, O2. Heater O2 sensor. sensors are dead. The heater... Just bank one though. Bank one, sensor one. That's interesting. Only sensor one. Yes. So one O2 sensor is dead. Okay. The heater is not working in it. But it also says no activity. So it might even... Just that be... could be a wiring issue then. Yeah. 
So, I mean, first thing we do there is probably change the sensor. Like I said, probably change all of the sensors, knowing that that EGT got really hot. Yeah, it's probably time for that. So, okay, what's what else do we Should got? I erase it? Or no, I don't erase them yet. Um, I don't know what the what that is. Let's see what that is. It's got three. Rear, rear. axle steering. Oof. Function restriction due, due to, to insufficient, insufficient voltage. Internal malfunction. Sensor for motor position and plausible. So that means that the sensor is out of range and it doesn't know where it is. That's not a good thing. The rear axle steering, if it doesn't know which direction the wheels are pointing, that could mean a big, big issue. If it thinks it's straight and it isn't, or it goes off and it moves on its Especially own. Especially at high speed. At high speed, like that's gonna try to spin you out off the freeway. <laughs> We're definitely gonna have to look into that more. And that could also be wiring uh, more rear, axle steering. Rear axle steering number two. Low voltage. So these could, they could just be a low voltage issue. Is when the voltage is under a certain range, the sensors just don't read correctly. And that could be the problem, but it also could be something else. It could be the power going to the sensor because of the wiring, it could be corrosion there. It's a lot of possibilities. It's unfortunate when you get codes that are really vague and multiple things coming from them, not just like a pinpoint, whatever it might be. It's like all of these different codes about that thing and they're all different. It just means there's something wrong with that sensor or the wiring that's going to it. I'm in chassis control and now yep. we have- Brake control module. Brake control module and electric dampening control. No signal, no communication. It's a lot of codes. Yeah. We still haven't seen anything about the EGTs. Not yet. Starter battery, lower, Limit not reach. Like it didn't get low enough voltage? That's weird, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> control Break. module for rear wheel drive. Please read DTC. So for the braking system for the rear wheel drive, I wonder if that has something to do with the rear steering? Maybe? Okay, central electronics. Let's see what's going on in here. Start stop mode indicator lamp. What? Just the lamp? So like the light on the push to start button? Yeah, I guess. Okay, well that doesn't seem like that big of a deal. Okay. Operating unit, no signal, no communication. Function restriction because no communication. Sounds like a wiring problem. Yeah, something's going on with the wiring. Oh man, I hate diagnosing wiring issues, especially of, on factory cars. A little bit of mud, a little bit of water. Mud, water, moisture, mold, that means a lot of times corrosion on the pins of the connectors. And that means going through each wiring pin and checking everything out. But also it's not just the pin where they connect to the other pin. It could also be the wire that goes into the pin and where it's crimped that could get corroded. And if that's corroded, it's really hard to, you can't see that unless you cut the wires and repin it and take it apart. It's an absolute nightmare to fix. Sometimes you would just change the entire wiring harness in the car. This is going to be a very expensive, wiring harness. I'm almost positive that they don't have one on the shelf. So that'd be something that you'd have to special order from Lamborghini and they would have to make it. There's a lot of cars that have different harnesses over different models. It's also some cars that have the same harness that go over a lot of different models, but I don't know these cars well enough to say which case it is for this specific car. Sounds like Tim, you have a new job. No, 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 I'm good. Wiring master. <laughs> All right, Tim, get to it. I'm gonna go take a break. I'm gonna go get a coffee and uh, let me know when you figure it out. All right, well, I think our best uh, direction right now is to just clear all of these codes. We're going to take a picture real quick of all of the codes so we have them saved. We're gonna go drive it basically and see if they come back and if they're repeating the same code or if we get any new codes, we'll see what happens. But we could just start diagnosing every single thing right now. That's gonna take forever. Some of these things kind of happen with a low voltage situation. So it could have just been, the battery was low when it got started and the alternator didn't charge it up that quick. It took a minute or two and all those systems are looking for the voltage to be up to 13 and a half, 14 volts and it wasn't there. So you'll get a bunch of error codes just because of that. So hopefully that's most of the issues, but we won't know until we clear the codes and take this thing for a drive. Codes are cleared, ready to drive this thing. So everything actually cleared, no codes came back yet. Obviously we haven't started the car. Initially, that's a good sign. Fire it up and uh, take it for a little spin. See what happens. Nothing on the light except for the uh, TPMS, and you need gas. 
Yep, we are low on fuel, which makes sense because usually you can't ship cars in a container that have a full tank of gas. They actually want very little fuel in there, but we do have 50 kilometer range. I don't think we're gonna go more than 25 kilometers. So we should be fine. The transmission light is on already. So when we fired it up, it started pulling out. It wasn't on, but now we've got that little gear warning over there. But I'm not gonna head back just yet. I'm gonna drive it around a little bit and see if we get any other warning lights, check engine lights. Just give it a chance to uh, kind of go through all the systems. See if anything else is wrong with it. How does it feel? So far, it feels the same as when we drove it over here. No difference. Um, but then again, when we drove it back to the shop, I didn't notice anything that really felt like there was an issue. So I don't know if that's really a good thing because if we could feel something going on, then we could pinpoint a problem. But so far, it's just it's driving normally. Back to the shop now. I'm not seeing anything else. The car is driving fine. Obviously, we got that transmission warning light on. We haven't had the check engine light come back on yet, so that's possibly a good sign. We also only drove about 10 miles. Sometimes you might have something come on in that range. Sometimes you wouldn't. So we'll see what came back. Like I said, hopefully, most of the issues that we saw on the scan tool were due to low voltage, which was due to just the battery being down a bit on startup. That's my best guess at this time. I did hear some squeaking as we were pulling in right now, but I wonder if that was just the brake, like a little bit of brake squeak. Because I don't hear it anymore. Yeah, I can't say for sure if the four wheel steering is working or not because I don't drive this car very often. Actually, I've only driven it once before and that was picking it up from Gintani's shop after they changed the transmission and driving it back, which is pretty much all freeway miles. If it isn't working right now and it's just keeping the rear wheel straight, that's definitely a possibility, but that's something that I'm gonna have to get Damon's input on because he drives his car all the time, so he would know what the turning radius is and what it feels like. All right, well, I'm gonna have Tim get on the auto and see what other codes popped up while we went for our drive. And I'm gonna jump on the phone and see if the oxygen sensors and the EGT probes are available and how much they cost. Because no matter what, I wanna replace those. We know that we had an issue with them. We know that one of them has already failed. So we need to replace the rest of them, no matter what. That's just something that has to happen on this car. And as far as what else is wrong with the car, well, Tim, plug it in and uh, see what kind of codes we got. Here we go. All right, we're 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 in the computer, we're, we're locked in. We still got issues. What we got? Uh, something's still in engine control, so let's see. Which is weird because I didn't have a check engine light on, but we did have a transmission gear. That O2 sensor O2 still. sensor. Okay, so 100% O2 sensors, we need to change those. All wheel, All wheel control. control. Oh, that wasn't on before. It was. Wasn't that the rear steering? No, this is, this is all wheel, the other one was rear wheel. We got a new one now? We got a new one. Brake control module, please read DTC. Yeah, it's an ABS control module. No, no signal, signal, no communication. So maybe that's what the gear is. Mm. So the transmission control unit is going to read off of the ABS unit. So we've got the four wheel speed sensors and those all communicate with the ABS module and then that module is sending a signal to the ECU. And it looks like we've got some issue there. 
It goes to the ECU, then it goes to the transmission control unit, and it's all communicating together to tell the transmission how fast the wheels are going, obviously so it knows what gear to go into when it's in automatic mode. It's probably doing a lot of other things as well for launch control and just all the other drivability stuff. That's an issue. Well, one, that's the braking system. Here's the real issue. It's not like a car that doesn't have ABS when an ABS equipped car, that part stops working. The balance of the car, the front to rear brake balance is all controlled by the ABS unit. So if you don't have the ABS unit working, you can still have brakes, but your brakes are gonna lock up really, really quickly. So at maybe 40% of their regular braking force, the brakes will lock up, lock up the rear axle and you'll spin, or you'll lock up the front brakes and lose control of steering. And if you're going around a corner and you get on the brakes a bit, a normal amount, it could lock the brakes up and you could spin off or understeer off into a guardrail or off the side of a cliff. This is not something you wanna mess with. And that is something I'm concerned about on this car. It isn't pinpointing anything, so we're gonna to have to dive into that a bit deeper to see what's going on, because that is definitely a big safety issue. Yeah, that's not something you wanna mess around with. And then there's one more thing. The tires are low. The tires? Yeah. So put some air in them, Tim. <laughs> well, I can't really find much as far as new parts on the internet. I found some used ones on eBay and is that for all of them or one? That's for all of them. It's all the probes and the ox four oxygen sensors. But it, I mean, they look like. But they're used. Dude, they're, they're used. Used. Dude. Like, <laughs> look at that picture. They're probably in worse shape than the ones that are on the car. So we're not going to go this route. <laughs> we're going to look for new ones. But unfortunately, to do that, I'm going to have to call the dealer. So let me Shall show we these take guys. Uh, price guesses. We're going to get the four new temp probes and four new oxygen sensors. Four bands. Four, four grand. bands. Four grand. Twenty five hundred. I'm guessing oh, wait, like probably look at the price used. Five, well, well you those know. are terrible <laughs> used. <Yeah. laughs> but look at the yeah. price. Four grand. How you doing? Um, I've got a 2019 uh, Aventador SVJ, and I want to replace. Uh, I want to purchase all four of the oxygen sensors and all four of the EGT probes. So I want to see if you guys have those in stock um, and what the price is on those. Well, the other two sensors in stock. Okay. That's for the gas temperature sensors. So those I'd have to order. All right. Um, and how long would it take you to get those? Usually about seven to ten days. Okay. And uh, what's the price on those? Everything out the door is four thousand eight hundred eighty twenty-six. All right. Um, let me check with the guys and make sure that uh, we're all good to purchase that, and I will give you a ring back. You so, called it. Go. Well, well actually, five G's. actually, that's five G's, but that's, uh, well, it's forty-eight, right? Forty-eight, eighty-two. Yeah, basically, that's crazy. So <laughs> a, lot, a lot of dollars for a couple sensors, but this is a Lamborghini SVJ. It is what it is, but we need those parts for sure. That doesn't solve the issue that we had with the rear steering. What else do we get now? The ABS. All wheel steering, but yeah, ABS, ABS module. ABS module, communication. That we're gonna have to dive into a bit more. And that's not something we wanna just start throwing parts at because if those oxygen sensors and probes, EGT probes are $5,000, then the ABS pump on this car is probably 10 to 15,000. Plus it's gotta go to the dealership to do the programming on that. And that could just be a total guess as it, if it is that actually, or is it wiring or is it some other sensor? There's a lot of stuff that that's in that system. It's the ABS control pump, but it's also a yaw sensor in the car that tells you how many G's you're either braking, accelerating, turning. It could be that sensor, it could be the wiring, it could be one of the individual wheel sensors. We do not know at this point. It's a very vague code that we're getting. We're gonna have to dive into that for sure and figure out what's going on because like I said, that is a big safety issue. We need to sort that out as quickly as possible. Speaking of G's, there's gonna be a lot of G's spent soon. Nobody said it was cheap to own a supercar.